threads, we all make them. Some of us do them daily, some of us a couple times a week. It really depends what industry you're in. Uh, there's always a lot of to consider, you know, type of hole, type of material, how long your threads are going to be. Is it a blind hole? Is it a through hole? What kind of machine you're making it on? And today I'm going to use my experience, tips and tricks I've learned as a machinist in the trade to help steer you on the right path and sharpen your skills and, you know, hopefully save you breaking a couple taps. Now, there's a lot of ways to make threads. Today we're specifically talking about ID threads. It's applicable to both lathes and millwork, uh, radial arm drills, manual mills, manual lathes. Uh, we're going to be talking about roll form taps, cutting taps, and we're going to be talking about thread mills. Now, thread mills, obviously, you can only do on a machine that's able to do circular interpolation. So, if your machine doesn't, have that capability then that's not going to be the option for you okay so let's look at the things to consider we've got red class is your hole a blind hole or are you tapping all the way through and then we've got length of the thread that you're going to require that's part of the consideration right okay so we're going to go through uh, as form tap first then cutting tap and then we're going to go on to thread mills for each category uh, a, B, C, D, and then there's a little addition on the end. Let's call that E, that's bonus. So stick through to the end. The whole reason I'm bringing this video to you guys, the whole reason I'm making videos, my goal is to bring more manufacturing to North America. And how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna help spread knowledge and skills, share between shops, things that are working on your material types. That's why I thought I'd talk about tapping. I've got a lot of questions lately, a lot of feedback from different suppliers, different reps, and different customers. So I thought this is a great way to help share some value with you guys because the more we learn, the better we can do, the more manufacturing we can bring to North America. If you want to know more, check out meetarthur.ca. All right, now back to the subject at hand. Okay, first category, material for form taps. Now, what kind of material should you use form taps? Anything soft, you know, really anything under 35 uh, hardness Rockwell is a good place to be with a form tap. You know, all that stringy, gummy, mild steel, aluminum, some bronze, some brass, uh, some stainless, like 304, you know, doesn't like a cutting tap, but it rolls and forms really surprisingly well. Surprising amount of people that try to go into stainless with a cutting tap because they think it's going to be the best, or a thread mill, which thread mills are awesome. This isn't the material for them. Okay, so cutting taps, where are you going to use? Well, you're going to use them in material up to 50 Rockwell. There are some specialty taps you can get a little bit harder, but generally when you get into the really hard material, you want to avoid a cutting tap when possible because snapping a tap in those materials usually means the part's lost. Another thing to consider, those materials are usually substantially more expensive and Losing that chunk of material, especially if you're several ops in, you have all that labor in, it's not a great place to be. A roll of form or a thread mill, depending on the material, is probably going to be a better fit for you. Okay, now thread mills. What materials? Well, you can really use them in any materials. Uh, I've had a lot of luck in ductile and softer materials, hard materials, you know, up to 60, 62 Rockwell. Um, we're getting in some really tough stuff. The reason is, is you can change your depth of cut, your radial engagement, your speeds and feeds, you can fine tune it a lot more with a thread mill. You know, when you're stuck with your standard tap, it works, but you got that breakage risk. On top of that, you can only really, you know, have that same feed. It's all determined by your pitch. It's not like you can just feed half, you know, and still get a usable thread. That's, that's not how, you know, tapping works. They're great, they have their fit. So does thread milling. Okay, going on to the second category now. We're gonna talk about thread class. It's an important consideration. Do you just need a cheap and dirty, no one's asking, no one's specced out the tolerance, you know, 1B, 2B, 3B, no one's required it. It's not a 6H or a 4H, it's just, I need a half 13, I'm gonna put it together. I really don't care how it looks, as long as it slams together. These are all points to consider. Now for form taps, you know, your 2B, your 3B, your tighter tolerances, high finish, you know, this is why it's a great fit for stainless applications uh, because you get that better surface finish. Now in stainless, as you well know, any kind of imperfection, imperfections, <laughs> learning how to speak again today, folks, in the surface are going to cause and promote corrosion. You know, the whole reason we use stainless in the first place is to reduce that. 
So when possible, I recommend using a roll form tap. Uh, you know, I've used them as small as uh, an M2 by 0.4 in stainless. It works wonders, especially if you get the new TICN that's offered by a few different companies, okay? All the way up to, I'd say, around M16. It's about the biggest roll form I've had to use. Um, you can go bigger. You just got to start looking at the torque. Uh, that's going to factor into your machine, okay? It's really where the limiter is going to be. Um, now, cutting taps, you know, uh, they make a great 1B or 2B, you know, your 6H, 8H class, that loose spec, you know, you need it through. You know, if you've got a application where you just need to put them in, I've had lots over the years, it's cheap to keep them there. They're kind of the, the, the old school method, but it works. Okay, and then... Now we talk about thread milling. Now, again, I talked about it a bit in material. That adjustability, that variability that comes with thread milling. You can fine tune and hold tight tolerances on your threads. You know, tune it in for your min max to really squeeze and get that perfect fit. Thread mills are truly the way to go. Uh, especially on materials that like to uh, collapse after pushing a tap through. <laughs> You know, some bronze and brass, it, you'll thread through and uh, tap. It's already an oversized tap. Still, it starts to wear. Your material expands, contracts back in. And then, you know, you're back trying to retap and retap and retap. You could switch to a thread mill. Figure out that sweet spot, interpolate it out. It's a great fit. Okay, now the next consideration. Are you working with a blind hole or a through hole? If you're working with a through hole or a blind hole, roll form taps work, okay? There's not a lot to think about here. Blind holes, they work even better because there's no chips produced. Uh, make sure you get the style without the gullet on the side if you're doing something soft. That little gullet relief on some of the roll form taps in a really soft stringy material can pick up slight dust and jam. Not what you wanna do, you know? We're trying to help you avoid broken taps, okay? So those roll forms, they usually have a smaller lead, you know, one and a half to two and a half turns. You can get right down to the bottom. Cutting taps, they have spiral flute bottoming taps. I still leave a decent pocket at the bottom for those and I'll finish to depth by hand. I know, call me paranoid, I don't like wasting parts. Now, if you have a lot of room where you can over drill, you know, go well past that depth, and then tap to the depth you need, that's great. You know, there's couplers where you have that room. You can drill an extra quarter inch deep to give yourself all that uh, room. Uh, through holes, cutting tap, great. They have spiral point, pushes the chips right through. Again, this is great in uh, your harder steels, your 45 up to 50 Rockwell there. You can push those hard chips through. You don't have to worry about them pulling up through a spiral flute and then you're wearing out that core prematurely. Tons of applications there. Thread mills. Uh, we're going to cover more of this in the length of thread just coming up after here. Blinder through, again, doesn't really matter. You've got a couple different options, uh, whether you do flood coolant, through tool coolant, you have radial or axial through tool coolant, depending on the thread mill that you're working with. These are some awesome options, so whether you're going through or you're going to blind, they work. They're phenomenal, they're adjustable, and they can be quite advantageous. Next consideration length of thread you need. Now, cutting taps, this is where they shine. They typically come in longer varieties. There's less stress on the shank of the taps, so you're able to get that longer extension. You're able to push it through a longer hole. Roll form, you can still get decent reach. Um, typically, manufacturers don't have quite the uh, diameter to length ratio that you'll find in cutting taps, okay? Um, and then thread depth, again, we're looking at thread mills. Okay, now, they have some awesome options here. I know we're talking about, you know, under half inch for the most part for the taps. For thread mills, I have found a lot of great benefit on the really, really small. The smallest I've ever done was a 440 thread mill. I went in with an end mill, made a little flat bottom hole. I'm talking, you know, what was it, 48 thou depth. Um, and then I put in a couple rotations on the 440 with a little thread mill. Uh, there was just a little circuit board being assembled into there. They didn't need a lot of thread. They put thread locker on it after anyway during assembly. But I wouldn't have been able to do that with a roll form or a cutting tap. And we were able to automate the process thanks to the thread mill. We were able to hold great thread size. And 
there's no other way I could have got that thread in there. And other shops turned away the job because of it. I was able to find the solution. Um, another place that they shine um, is a really around half inch in upsize. Personally, from my experience, when you start to get to those bigger sizes, you know, uh, especially when you're working uh, with NPT, say you've got uh, a bunch of different NPT features, you go through on like a thin wall casting, let's say, ramp up and get it. Um, right to size. You can do this with a lot of different thread formats with the uh, thread mills. The nice thing is is uh, they all come in one pitch and then you interpolate the size you need. So if you have a bunch of different diameters all with the same pitch for some reason, this is a great solution. You know, you get into a lot of marine fittings, this kind of thing for electrical and ceiling housings. Um, this works well because they'll have the same pitch on a couple different sizes of openings for their attachments. You can now do that all with one tool when you know you've only got 30 tools. It's not always enough. Okay, now something else I mentioned at the beginning, it's the machine, okay? Thread milling, obviously, if you're on a radial arm drill or a manual mill, not really a great option. It really requires that CNC uh, component to make it viable. That's something to consider. Um, aside from that, both taps work fantastic in any application. I did mention earlier, you know, you get up to that 16 mil, you start to get past that half inch mark, um, roll form the torque requirements, climb exponentially at that point, because you're forming and you're not cutting. So really at that point, in my experience, it's been uh, cutting taps. So far that still holds true. Uh, now, just some quick tips um, for the three types. I found it to be true for all of them. When you're making your hole, Okay, this sounds silly, but it saved me so many broken taps. I always kept a pin gauge or something to check form if it's a very large thread for the pre-machine diameter, whether you're turning on a lathe or you're on a mill. Do I check every single part? Not while a spindle's running. I don't have that kind of time. That's valuable time. You know, the whole goal is to keep that spindle spinning. But I will check them, you know, every hour, depending on the number that you're making, and I'll check them after they're out of the machine, your go, your no-go thread gauge, you gotta find time to make sure you're making quality parts. Uh, one of those ways, like I said, was something to check the thread form, especially in roll form. Um, I'd get a pin gauge, put it all the way down, uh, make sure I go all the way down in the hole to get to the bottom, there's no pinch point, you know, even a thou worth of pinch as a tap's getting to the bottom of your hole, you're gonna snap, you're gonna break that tap, you're either gonna write off the part, you're gonna have EDM costs, you know, you're gonna have that lost labor. It's it's worth the couple seconds it takes to just slide it in and check. You should get that nice slip fit, whatever the size is you're trying to maintain. If it pinches at all, you know, rerun the drill. Check it on the next one. Change that drill out. Um, using this method, I was able to take that M2 by 0.4 roll form tap into the thousands of holes like 3,000 holes in cli and climbing past that, okay? The manufacturer told me I'd be lucky to get 1,700, but by pairing it with a carbide drill through spindle coolant, my little pin gauge checks as we were running, I was able to prevent a lot of thread breakage and thread loss. Another one some guys don't think about is checking the ID of your hole, again, with something to check form. Um, you know, a go, no go thread gauge isn't gonna check your minor. Make sure you're checking with pins, especially if you've got tight tolerances, it's easy for your taps to go all up, especially in some of that softer material. And now your miner's oversize, even undersize. Um, keeping an eye on that miner, again, it's gonna expend, extend your tool life. You're gonna make less scrap. You're gonna save the shop more money and people are gonna notice that. At least, I know they did with me. You can really track and improve that way. I'm always for continuous improvement. In conclusion, okay, I know we went over quite a few things. I threw in some tips, some experience there that I'm here to share with you all my years as a machinist. Um, there's really a lot of things to consider. Uh, general in the shop, you know, the common thing I'm still seeing at shops is a lot of cutting taps. I have a couple shops that I go into now where they're starting to stock the roll form too in their common sizes because um, you know, they're doing thousands and thousands of holes now with those roll forms instead of a couple hundred with the cutting taps. Um, it's a great application. Uh, thread mills too. You can get them, you can regrind them, you can sharpen them. Uh, you get a lot of tool life out of it. And then the hard materials, it can really save your bacon. If you ever want to talk about 
considerations, upcoming projects, whether they're taps or other tooling, I'm always here and available to you. Just uh, shoot me an email to the address between my fingers. <laughs> um, you know, feel free to check out my other videos. I'm here to give value. Leave your comments in the section below. You know, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I'm here to add value to your lives to improve your ability so that we can all bring more manufacturing back to North America. Create some new jobs here. Let's contribute to our economies. Let's grow together. Keep cutting. Keep those spindles turning. Talk to you later.